So, in today's video we're going to see how to solve Lagrangian mechanics problems using object-oriented Python. And so for this example I've chosen to use the um, simple pendulum. So we have a mass m attached to a massless inextensible string of length l that's moving under the influence of the Earth's gravitational field, and so this is the pendulum which is drawn over here in the middle. And so if we use basic trigonometry, we see that we can find the x and y coordinates of the bob in terms of theta, so the bob is this little mass, and x is l sine theta and y is minus l cosine theta. And so if you're a bit confused about this, I recommend you go check out my previous video on the simple pendulum where I explain more of all of these things in more detail. So the kinetic energy of this pendulum is given by half mv squared, so half mx dot squared plus y dot squared, and the potential energy v is just um, mgy. And so once we have the kinetic and the potential energy, we can construct the Lagrangian, so L of theta, theta dot, and t is just kinetic minus potential. And from the Lagrangian, we can find the equation of motion for the pendulum by uh, computing these uh, derivatives over here. And so the really cool thing about this method is that we don't need to do any of this differentiating. We All we need to do is to uh, get these expressions into SymPy and it will find these derivatives for us. And then we can turn them into NumPy functions and solve the equation of motion numerically. So let's get started. So we have our imports. So we have NumPy and SymPy. Then we also have uh, integrate, uh, so odint from scipy.integrate, which will be used to solve the differential equation. And then we just have a bunch of uh, uh, packages to animate the motion of the pendulum. So let's run this. And so as I mentioned, we're going to be using object-oriented programming. So we're going to be using classes and functions. And this method is a very important thing for anyone that wants to learn how to code. Because if you're coding in object-oriented uh, style, you uh, it makes things very easy. Because if we want to you know, call different pendulums with different masses, different starting angles, it becomes really easy to have everything condensed into one class. And this becomes even more interesting to do when uh, we start working with more uh, complicated uh, mechanic systems. So let's start by creating a class called Pendulum. Uh, then we have to initialize our class, so def init self. And so when we initialize our class, we have to define its attributes. So the attributes of the pendulum will be its length. Um, there's also going to be the time, so the range of time to which we want to solve it. There's going to be the starting angle theta zero and the starting velocity v zero. So now let's just tell Python what these attributes are. So self.l is just going to be l, the length. Self.t is just going to be t. And then we'll define something called self.cons. So the initial conditions, which is going just going to be theta zero and v zero. And the reason why I have them uh, packed into this list is because it's it makes it really easy to work with uh, odint when we solve the equation. So now we're going to write a function that solves the equations of motion for the pendulum. So we're going to call it solve pend, and it will just take in self uh, as input. So what we need to do now is we need to get x, y, uh, and the Lagrangian into sim as simple expressions so we can start uh, finding the equations of motion by differentiating our Lagrangian over here. So let's just define a set of symbols. So we'll, our symbols will be m, g, l, and t are going to be symbols. So m, so sorry, m, they have to be in the same order. This is really important. m, g, l, and t. And then we're going to define theta equals sympy.function with a capital F, theta, of t. And so just for now we're going to display um, theta. And so what we're going to do quickly is we're just going to run this code and see if we're able to display theta correctly to check that we've done nothing wrong. And this is something I really encourage you guys to do when you use object-oriented programming and functions is to print things and you know make sure that as you go along the way things are correct. So let's just define our time. So t equals np dot lin space. So 0 to 10 seconds with 500 points. And now let's create a pendulum object. So pend equals pendulum with length one, t, theta zero will just be pi over four, and v zero is going to be zero. And let's just call pend dot solve pend on our pendulum and see if we can display theta. There we go. So you see that everything seems pretty correct. We're able to show theta. 
So now to continue, let's just define theta's time derivative. So the velocity d theta or theta dot is just going to be theta dot diff with respect to, t to time t. The acceleration d d theta is just going to be the velocity differentiated with respect to time. There we go. So now that we've got this, we can start um, uh, defining what x and y are. So x, y is just going to be um, L times sin pi dot sine theta, and y is just going to be minus L times cosine theta. And so now that we've got x and y, we can get our kinetic energy. So t is just half mv squared, so sin pi dot rational 1, 2. I'm just using this rational so it um, displays a fraction correctly when we check if our, our things are correct. Times m times x dot differentiated with respect to time plus y dot diff with respect to time squared. Both are squared. And our potential energy v is just m times g times y. So our Lagrangian is just t minus v. And let's just display uh, our Lagrangian uh, simplified, so L dot simplify. And what this does is it just prints it out in a pretty neat way. So let's run this, this code again. Um, sorry. L times sin pi dot sine theta. Oh, did I do something wrong? Oh yeah, sorry. There we go, like this. Yeah, so this is the Lagrangian for the simple uh, pendulum. So now that we've got a Lagrangian, we can start differentiating it to get the equation of motion. So we have to compute these, these two um, derivatives over here. So let's just define the left-hand side of the equation. So left-hand side equals L dot differentiated with respect to theta. And then we have our right-hand side, which is a bit more tricky, but let's work through it together. So sin pi dot differentiate. So we're differentiating dl by d theta dot. So l dot diff with respect to d theta. So theta dot or uh, differentiated with respect to time. So we're differentiating partial l by partial theta dot with respect to time. And so our equation is just going to be the right-hand side minus the left-hand side. And so this, this is going to give us our equation for the pendulum, but what we actually want is we want to have it in the form of theta double dot equals something. And so the way to do this is to just do sin pi dot solve equation for dd theta. And then we'll take the uh, zeroth element because this solve a function returns a list. And so now let's just display our equation simplified. So display ek dot simplify. There we go. And now let's run this to check everything's correct. And yeah, uh, we see that we get, uh, so this means that theta double dot equals minus g over L sine theta. And some of you might recognize this as the equation of motion for the simple pendulum. So this tells us that what we've done so far is correct. And so we can carry on. So now that we've found the correct equation of motion for our simple pendulum, which is this one, we can actually start thinking about how to solve this equation numerically. So the first step we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert this symbolic expression into a Python uh, function that can be evaluated numerically using NumPy, for example. And so once we've done this, we're going to have a, to use a common trick in um, a numerical uh, computational problems, which is to separate this second order differential equation into a system of two first order differential equations. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to let u equals theta dot and by doing this, we now get this system of two differential equations, where theta dot equals u, and u dot equals minus g over L sine theta. And they can be written in this uh, vector matrix form over here. So once we've done this, we need to define a state vector x, which we can then differentiate with respect to time to get the systems of equation for the system. And so x is nothing but theta and u, and therefore dx by dt is just u and minus g over L sine theta. So just to quickly summarize what we're trying to do. First, we need to convert theta dot and u dot into Python functions that can be evaluated numerically. Then we need to create a function that takes in uh, as input a state vector x, so theta and u, and returns u and minus g over L sine theta. 
And finally, we can call this function in SciPy's ODN method, and this will allow us to solve for uh, theta. So let's let's start doing this. So first, we're going to convert u uh, or um, theta dot sorry into a um, Python function. So we'll just call this um, d theta dt numerical is equal to simpy dot uh, lambda phi. And so lambda phi is a simpy function that converts symbolic expressions into Python functions. So it's exactly what we need. So the arguments are going to be d theta and it's just going to lambda phi the function d theta. And then we can do the same thing for du dt. And du dt is nothing but this, right? So du dt numerical is going to be simpy dot lambda phi. So the arguments are g l and theta, and we're going to lambda -fy, um the equation. And then let's also just do that for x and y. So x numerical, so that's going to be for later for, for plotting and animating. So x numerical, y numerical is simpy dot uh, lambda -fy. So l theta x, and y is just going to be the same thing, but we're lambda -fying y. So now that we've um, turn this, these functions into uh, numerical expressions that can be evaluated. I just quickly want to clear out my computer's memory of these four variables, which we're going to use later, uh, just you know to make sure that there's no uh, confusion if for Python, whether it's a numerical value or a symbolic value. So I'll just do del m, g, l, and t, and then I'll redefine them. So g is just going to be 9.81, the acceleration due to gravity, L is just going to be the class's attribute, self.l. T is the same thing, self.t. So this, this is the, the range of times for which we're going to solve our, our system. And then we have our conditions, which are just going to be uh, self.cons. So basically now we've done this first step. So the next thing we want to do is to create a function that takes an x and returns x dot. So we'll call this function def dx dt. So we'll take as input x, t, and then it will take um, g and l uh, as other inputs. So, and now, so remember our x vector is just theta and u. So we can just say that theta numerical, u numerical is just um, uh, equal to x. And so this function is just going to return a list. And so the first element of that list is going to be d theta by dt. So that's just going to be uh, d theta by dt numerical evaluated at u numerical. So d theta dt numerical evaluated at u numerical. And the second element of this dx by dt vector is just going to be minus g of l sine theta. So that's just going to be the equation. So this one. So it's going to be du dt numerical numerical evaluated at L, sorry, so G, L, and theta numerical. So now that we've done this, we can just call this function into SciPy's ODINT. So solution equals uh, ODINT dx dt, t equals t. Uh, initial conditions are just our cons and our other arguments are in a tuple and they're just going to be um, G and L. And then we can just ask, ask our script to return salt. So we can start working with this solution now. So yeah, here we, ha we have this, so let's just run it and see what happens. Oh, lambda die. Okay, I, I, I added a T somewhere. There. All right, there we go, okay. So now that now we've got our solutions, so now let's examine what our solutions are. So we see that there are a NumPy array and there are it's actually two vectors. So this first vector over here is the theta, and the second vector over here is theta dot. So what we need to do is we need to say that uh, so first we need to, to transpose. So let me just transpose it so we can access it using uh, the index. So let's do this, this. And now let's say that uh, theta equals uh, sol element zero, 
and we'll say that uh, velocity equals sole element one. And now just to quickly check things, let's just plot these two guys together. So plt dot plot t uh, theta, and we'll just say label equals angle, and then we'll do the same thing on uh, velocity. So plt dot plot t uh, velocity, and the label is going to be velocity. And then we'll just add a legend, plt dot legend. There we go. So yeah, there we go. So we see that this actually does really resemble what we would expect from a pendulum. So it's just the angle just oscillates uh, back and forth. And so the next step now is to extract x and y because if we want to animate this pendulum, we have to uh, get x and y. So instead of returning this uh, solution dot transpose, uh, we can just copy paste this code. Uh, so let's just delete the cell because we don't need it anymore. So you can just copy paste this code over here. And our function in our class is just going to return uh, x numerical, right? Because x numerical and y numerical were defined here. And remember, x and y numerical are just these expressions, L sine theta and minus L cosine theta. So we're going to return uh, x numerical evaluated at L and angle and y numerical for L and angle. So now we can just change this and x, y equals this. And let's just plot t and x just to check that everything's in order. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. So this has to be solution dot transpose. I forgot to retranspose it afterwards. There we go. Now it should be fine, yeah. So this is pretty much what we'd expect um, in the simple pendulum. So now the next stage is to just uh, use these findings to create an animation of the pendulum swinging back and forth, and that's what we're going to do now. So in this cell block, I have this uh, code that animates our uh, pendulum. So I'd just like to give credit for um, the person on this website who actually wrote this code. I just had to change a few things, but um, this is where I got the code from, if any of you are interested. Um, and so, yeah, so the first thing we do is we uh, define the initial coordinates, then we create a matplotlib figure, and we basically draw this line from the origin, from the point zero zero, to the initial position uh, of the pendulum, and then we add this circle that represents the ma the mass that's hanging off. Then we set the limits for our plot, so we have enough space for the pendulum to swing, and we can visualize everything. And here we animate, so we just update our line uh, to the x and current x and y positions of the pendulum. So for each element in these arrays. And um, then we have all the frames and the number of steps, and we basically just call uh, the matplotlib animation function uh, on these. And then since we're using a Jupyter notebook, I like to use the HTML5 uh, 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 tool to basically be able to display uh, these animations in the notebook. So let's just run uh, quickly run this code. So it does take a bit of time, but um, we'll get a really cool animation of our pendulum swinging. So there it is. We see we have this really nice and smooth uh, animation of the pendulum swinging. And so now we're really going to see uh, the power of uh, object-oriented programming, because all we did here, we can, just by tweaking a few numbers, we can get a completely different pendulum. So now let's try it for a pendulum that starts at an angle of pi over 6, uh, and has an initial velocity of, let's say, 5 uh, meters per second. So let's just run all of this, and the animation. And so we see that we already get a different uh, x of t, and we'll see that we'll also get a completely different uh, looking pendulum. There we go. So you see that our pendulum started at a much smaller angle, but because we gave it an initial push, it's swinging higher than uh, before. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. And I will be putting uh, this uh, Jupyter notebook on GitHub. So I encourage everyone to go around and have a play with the, the code if you're interested. And yeah, thanks for watching.